Good keys, Andy Lip here, back with another OBS tutorial, and I'm gonna show you different ways of getting a drop shadow on your stream. So whether it's on your webcam or anything like that, there are so many different ways to do it using different plugins. So it might be better that you do it one way than another way, depending on what GPU you're using. I'm actually using a really old GPU. I'm using a R9290 and I can manage to do these effects, so I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to do it as well. But you do have to be take into it a lot into consideration when you start messing about with the blurs as well to, to give it that really nice, um, satisfying look where, where it looks like it's on your camera's on top and the, the drop shadow makes it kind of look 3D ish. Uh, when you start messing about with the alpha part of that, it can start taking a strain. But I'm going to talk you through all that and show you the different methods, okay? So without further ado, let's get on with it. Put your rock over the stone. Let's go. Right, so the first way I'm going to show you is using the OBS shader filter plugin. So we've covered this a lot on the channel. So if you, you're new here, I, you just download it from the OBS website. All the links are going to be in the description. Just go up and press download just here. It's going to probably take you, uh, in fact, no, this one just installs straight off because there's only one version. It's only available for Windows. So once we've got that file, we can open it up and you'll see we've got OBS-Studio in there. Let me just move it in the middle, does help. <laughs> OBS-Studio, and then in here you've got Data and OBS plugins. You're just going to copy both of them fol uh, folders just there, and we're going to go to your C drive, and then either in Program Files or Program Files 86, mine's Program Files, and then we're looking for OBS-Studio, all lowercase, just in there, and we're just going to press Paste, and that will pour everything across. This is exactly how you'd update it as well. You just press replace and then done, 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 done. Since I've already got mine installed, I'm just going to close that down. Once installed, we can open up OBS. So you can see I'm just using a color source to create a bit of a background so you'll be able to see the borders that we're going to add. Uh, well, the drop shadow, sorry. And also the camera that you can see just here. I'm using a virtual camera, so that's how I've got it in two versions of OBS at the same time. Again, I've got a video on that. Just search the channel. And we're going to right click and press filters and press plus on the effect filters and you should see user defined shader. If you're not seeing that, it means you've not installed it correctly. So try and install it again. So I'm just gonna call this drop shadow just here. Press OK, and I'm going to load shader from text file, press browse, and if we scroll a little bit down, it should automatically put you in the correct folder uh, with the way that it works. We're just going to use drop shadow just there. So you won't see any changes at all, because we need to scroll a little bit down on the right hand side here, and we'll start seeing some effects that we can change. The first thing we need to do is add extra pixels around our shape. So you can probably see the, the borders, see this red line, this is the this is the edge of each shape. Why is this not zooming in? I don't know what it's doing. Am I zoomed in? I don't know. Maybe. Cool. Uh, so as you can see around the edges just here, this, this red line, this is showing the edge of your source. So we're going to actually add extra pixels around the edge. So if I type in 10, uh, maybe 100, we'll make it, uh, we'll do 100 all the way around. You'll probably see now the edge is far away from the actual source. So we've technically made that source bigger without making it bigger, if that makes sense. It's as if we've got an extra bit of canvas that we can play around with. So you probably see already, if I zoom in, you'll see a little bit of a white drop shadow just here. So if we go back into the settings, now we've added them extra pixels around the edge. We can use the shadow offset X and offset Y. So if I start tinkering with them, now if I start turning X up, you probably see it's poking more out on this side just here. We do again to the Y, and that'll pop it out the bottom. So if I did that by 23, and that pops it out. If I do that by minus 23 and minus 23, you can see that the shadow's gone up on this side as well. So I'm going to put it back down to the bottom, and we, we've got a basic drop shadow now. We can add blur. So as we add blur, you're probably going to see this video is going to absolutely melt. It is just basically adding blur around the edge. I'm going to turn that down quick before it explodes my GPU. Um, so it says just here, blur size is limited and max of 15 to ensure GPU. So be careful with that one, okay? Uh, and then we can actually change the shadow color just here as well. So if I press select color, change it to black, we've got now a traditional drop shadow built in 
to a shader. Uh, like I say, depending on what you're using for the blur size, I mean, it looks all right when I put the blur on zero. It's just a solid look. It depends what look you're going for on the channel. Once it's on zero, it barely uses any resources at all, to be honest. Uh, we've got a uh, alpha is pre-multiplied, so that does help your GPU a little bit, little bit, um, but it's, it's pretty much up to you how you use this effect, okay? So that is the first way that you can use a drop shadow just using the shader filter plugin. So the next method I'm going to show you is using another plugin for OBS called Stream Effects. Again, I've done a ton of tutorials on different effects inside of Stream Effects. We're just going to go up and press download just here. Once that is done, it's going to take us to a GitHub page. We're going to scroll down and you'll see all the different releases just here. So we want the Windows one and we're just going to download the EXE file. Just download that and run through the installation process. Just because I've got mine already installed, I don't need to do that right now. But you'll be able to, it's, if you cannot, can't do it for the EXE file, just follow the previous steps of how we just installed the shader filter and just use one of the zip or the seven zip files as well. So once you've got all that installed, we can right click on the source we want it on and press filters. And the first thing we need to do is actually add a crop or pad. This is similar to what we did on the shader filter. We need to add some extra pixels around the edge of our source. So I'm just going to call it crop pad and press OK. On the left, we're going to do, because obviously if we change that to 100, you'll see it starts cropping our actual, uh, our actual source just there. But if we use a minus number, so if I do minus 100, it actually gives us more movement around the edges. And if you, you're using the uh, the edit transform as the position or alignment in center, which you can get by doing control E and changing the position or alignment, anytime you add pixels around the edge, it'll always do it from this central spot. So as you can see, I'm still centered into the screen in the exact same position, but now I've got extra pixels around to play around with. So jumping back into our filters, we can add another filter called SDF effects. Again, you should see it if you see the stream effects stuff all the way around. I'm going to load this up and I am really sorry. This is going to ruin the, the video here just because my GPU, again, it's still old. I have got one on order, but it's taking time to come because obviously the world in which we live in right now. Uh, so hopefully I will get it sorted. So I'm going to do this as quick as possible. We can use outer shadow just here. So if I tick that on, you'll probably see straight away I'm going to start dropping frames. So I'm going to do this ASAP. You can see a little black line all the way around the, the kind of edge here. So if I change the outer offset, you can see I can move this shadow around. You can see in there and do the same with the Y axis. So we've got more flexibility a lot easier with this plugin. We also have the alpha. So if I turn that down, we can show how kind of see-through we want the shadow to be. We've also got the minimum and maximum distance. So if I increase the distance, it just shows how much distance will kind of, it'll start fading out. So if I turn this right down, you'll see there's more fade around the edge on the drop shadow. We turn that up, it just means that it can be a solid line there. So resetting them both to zero, it'll just be a solid line pretty much. Oops. There we go. You'll see it's solid around the edges rather than it fading. And we can also change the color like we did previously. So if you wanted a white kind of shadow in the background, again, messing around with the, the opacity as well, create some really cool effects. And that's pretty much all you need to do to get that one working through stream effects. Again, I just want to stress, be careful with what, what you do add, because if you add too much, if your GPU can't handle it, then you will cause a lot of drop frames like you probably saw in this video. All right, let's move on to the final method. As a little bonus tip, with both of those methods that you've just seen, they are completely configurable. By that, I mean we can add other filters onto the top of it. So if we go to filters and press the plus sign, and we want to add, say, a rounded corner. So we add another shader. I'll call this rounded corner, like so, which is my favorite shader. Press load shader, go to browse, and we'll find the rounded corner. And you'll see when we start adding a corner radius, I'm going to do uh, 50, like you see there. It actually changes the shadow as well, adding rounded corners just there like so. It is a little glitchy in this corner here. That is where we'd have to use something called a nested scene. So what we can do is add a new scene. So we're going to create a new scene. We'll call it scene two, for instance. Uh, in fact, let's rename it and we'll call it rounded corners uh, cam. 
because we want to keep it organized. We're going to press add a source and we're going to just add the camera that we've been using. So add the video capture device and you'll see it's too large. We resize it so it's small and control D to center it into the middle. And I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to turn off the drop shadow. So I'm just going to turn that off and just keep the rounded corners on on its own. So you'll see we've got all four corners rounded just here. Make sure you don't have anything else on the scene. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Go back to here and I can delete that camera off there now because we're using a nested scene. So go back to just chatting and we can add the scene. Rounded corners cam. And you'll see we're all rounded on all four corners. When we click on the right click on the scene, we can go to filters. And now we can add the, uh, the drop shadow just to here. So if we go to user defined shader... Press OK and load from text file. Uh, or if you're using the, the stream effects, we can use the SDF effects. And we do drop shadow. You'll see we've got our drop shadow just here. I'm going to increase the X and Y to 32 each. And we'll also change the color to black. And you'll see now we have got a drop shadow with rounded corners. And we've not had to add the extra pixels around the edge. Because if you look at the scene... This whole scene has got loads of extra pixels around the edge now. This last method is by far the easiest method, but you don't have as much control. So when we're using the previous methods, we can crop, change the size of our source, and the drop shadow will follow suit. Whereas this one, we're going to use multiple sources to create that same effect. So you'd have to manually change each source individually, which can be a bit of a ball ache. But it does mean that it's going to be less GPU intensive, as you're about to see. So I've got my video capture device just here as previous. We're going to press the plus sign and we're just going to add a color source just here. So color source to press OK. Uh, so I'm using the resolution 2560 by 1440. So just change it to whatever size that you are using. Oh, 2560. Why is it that? That's wrong. There we go. Press OK. So you'll see it's full size just here. So what I can do is right click on the device we want to use and make sure it's the same resolution. Press copy transform. And then I can also then go to the one that we want it on and paste transform. And now these are both exactly the same size. You can manually resize it if you want to, but that's the, the easiest method to do that. I can now change this color of the background. I want it to be black, so I want a black shadow. I can move the source underneath this one, so this one's on top. And now I can manually just move it a couple of pixels, and we've got our drop shadow just there. So we can change where we, the position we want that to be in, how small we want it to be. You can always use the move transition plugin to move the source and stuff like that. But now it's barely using any um, CPU resources and GPU. So it's it's super effective. Uh, but again, you don't have the control to be able to change uh, the alpha. I mean, you could change it a little bit by adding a filter and pressing the plus and going to color correction. You can change the opacity a little bit. So you can have a lighter shadow like that, but you won't have that blur and the fall off on the edges. But again, at least it's kind of something. So this is like the intermediate, like this is the, the kind of middle ground. It depends what look you're looking for on your stream. But those are three different ways that you can create drop shadows in OBS. Obviously, a lot of you streamers are using multiple PC setups, so that's why I do prefer to show off the stream effects and the shader filters because it gives you so much more control. Again, combining that with all the plugins that are out there like move value, move transition, that kind of thing, you can create some really unique effects and movement and change different dynamics on your stream to make it look 3D basically so there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this definitely stop by some some of my streams i'll be able to show you this if you've got any questions or anything like that i'll definitely help you out and yeah that's the end of the video so if you do want to support me consider joining on patreon and also or maybe even uh, youtube memberships make sure you subscribe all that jazz these videos take a long time for me to make so put your rock on the stone and i'll see you in the next one much love I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full-time, make it free for you guys, and also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.